what would happen if you took a classic Japanese role-playing game, mixed it with Pokemon gameplay, and made everything in beautiful 3D? You would probably get a pretty good game. Something Pokemon Colosseum is not. Sorry, I don't have a habit of coming out swinging like this, but after streaming the game for 30 hours, it is clear Pokemon Colosseum is... lacking. Let's start from the top. Welcome, I am Lyra. For the couple past videos, we have been completing a living Pokedex in Pokemon Gen 3. A living dex means we don't just complete the in-game Pokedex, we follow the slogan, gotta catch them all, a bit too literally, and aim to obtain every single Pokemon. To be honest, the living Pokedex is for me an excuse to experience everything Pokemon has to offer. Completing a Gen 1 and 2 living dex allowed me to see the core games in a new light, and Gen 3 involves playing a lot of games I have never touched before. Two of them are the GameCube games Pokemon Colosseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, developed by Genius Sonority. I am underlining the developers not being Game Freak, as this is where the real story begins. Because of the secrecy surrounding video game development, Japanese companies, and business decisions in general, little is known of Pokemon Colosseum's development. The only thing we know for sure is that Genius Sonority was founded in 2002 using Nintendo funding by Manabu Yamana, one of the programmers behind Dragon Quest since the very first episode on the NES eventually becoming head of programming and even directing Dragon Quest V and VI on the SNES. In fact, several members of Genius Sonority's team, including Imana himself, were past Heartbeat developers, a game company whose only credits are, you guessed it, Dragon Quest games. What is the goal of this brand new team? Make a Japanese RPG based on Pokémon. A strange decision, considering Pokemon owes its success to making JRPGs as accessible and easy to play as possible, tweaking the genre's main issues while retaining its most successful aspects. So, we have a company looking to release its first game, with part of the team being fresh hires while the other only ever worked on Dragon Quest all of it directed by someone known for their skills as a programmer, with the final product being a unique spin on the Pokémon formula, with a year and a half development cycle. What could go wrong? Pokémon Colosseum starts with some dude blowing up a building to steal a strange arm thing, then escaping. The dude in question is our main protagonist, Wes. After watching a news report of our nasty deed on TV, we follow two thugs, as they appear to be kidnapping a girl. We deliver her, and she joins our party. Turns out Rui was captured because she is able to see shadow Pokémon, which are like normal Pokémon, except... smellier looking. So we team up and... fight everyone who uses shadow Pokémon. We also fight everyone who makes the shadow Pokémon happen. Basically, we just fight everyone. No, really, that's the entire plot. Regardless of if we fight Team Cypher or Team Snagum, the game is basically just good guys being good and fighting bad guys because they are bad. The snag machine we stole allows us to catch, or snag, already owned Pokémon. Because stealing is bad unless you are the good guy. Then it's A-OK. -okay. This game's story is unremarkable. It just happens, with no rhyme or reason. The antagonists have no real motivation or personal goal. They are just antagonists because this is the way the story is written. Even our main character barely has a backstory. There are only two references to our past in the game, and one of them happens in the post-credits content. Colosseum does not build towards anything, nor does it seem to care. Near the end of the game, a huge building, the Relgam Tower, is accessible out of nowhere, and we go there because… it is the last place we have not explored yet. It is hard to call the plot of Colosseum bad, as it implies the game has a plot. So little effort has been put into making events make sense or connect to one another, that we meet Gonzap, the mustache man from the intro cutscene, for the first time 
right before the final Colosseum. And what a Colosseum it is! We fight a bunch of random trainers, then a Kingdom Hearts cosplayer, then it is revealed the real bad guy was... <gasps> the Mayor! Which we met like once at the very beginning. We defeat him and everyone is happy. Also, Ho-Oh was watching over us all along. Wait, what? Oh, well, never mind then. When your plot is as deep as a Scooby-Doo episode, it is hard to consider yourself a JRPG. A genre usually defined by a strong story, served by interesting characters. The core Pokemon games always had a very straightforward plot, and it worked because the main protagonist's goal aligned with the players, beating a bunch of trainers to become Pokemon champion while catching Pokemon along the way. But Colosseum decided to remove the simple storyline to replace it with... nothing. The main protagonist does not have any personality or agency, as all we do in the entire game is follow someone else's orders, mostly Rui, our sidekick. Speaking of, having a partner following us around is a neat idea, but Rui takes over our life the moment we rescue her. She is only interested in two things, telling us what to do and getting in our way. See, when I'm not scared, oh no. Oh, get out of the way, girl! Oh my god, you're stuck! I'm stuck! Help! Help! Girl, please move! Help! I'm, I'm stuck! Please! Oh my god, uh, come on! No! Oh no! Oh, what happened? No! Uh-oh. Help! Help me! Oh no! Oh no, come on, girl, move! Move, move, <laughs> what the heck? No, just please, please, lady, please, 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 lady, 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 please, please, lady. She gets in our way so often, in fact, the game has to trade spots every time we get on an elevator. Look, we're in the back, and now we're in the front. It gets ridiculous during the elevator ride with no screen transitions. To solve the issue of Rui being in the way, we instead have a very lengthy animation where she exits the elevator, moves to the side, then we exit and neatly go in front of her. Clearly, the developers knew this was a problem. So why didn't they fix it? Why not make her pass through like the Final Fantasy VIII followers? While we're at it, why does the game keep asking for our opinion if it ignores us when we don't give the right answer? There are so many instances when characters will give us a good and bad option and dismiss our choice if we pick the wrong one. Why even ask? You can't replace character backstory with fake choices because I'm gonna pick the wrong answer every time and be frustrated every time. <sighs> okay. I think it's better if we move on from Colosseum's non-story and focus on positives instead. The core gameplay is cut in two parts. Exploration of the different cities that compose the region of Ore and the typical Pokémon fights. With the difference that Pokémon Colosseum exclusively features double battles. There is not a single, single battle present. And that's fantastic! Doubles really feel like the natural evolution of Pokémon, and makes encounters a lot more strategic and thrilling. If anything, playing Colosseum extensively makes me wish Emerald featured way more double fights. It is such an interesting format. And this game uses it well. The Colosseum challenges feature back-to-back -back encounters, with our team being healed in between trainers, creating a fun and exciting experience. And Sherry on top, Colosseum complements the double format with really tough yet well-designed encounters, such as the admin fights and their rematch in the Deep Colosseum, which are a welcome addition to the Pokémon formula. But for as fun as double battles are, they cannot hide the game's main issues. For starters, the exploration aspect, already limited by the lack of plot and the fact the game only takes place in cities and dungeons, 
is unfortunately a minuscule fraction of the game, overshadowed by combat. Going through the footage I recorded for this video, it is difficult to find anything that isn't a trainer encounter. A majority of the playtime is spent watching the same attack animations over and over and over and over and over. Worse, exploration is discouraged, as encounters can be triggered by something as simple as talking to an NPC. Because, like, the only thing, the only place I can think of is, uh, what's this dude? Oh, no, 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 I didn't want to, no, I didn't want to fight you! Oh! There is no safe area in Colosseum, and this lack of consistency makes it difficult to plan in any way especially when it seeps into the rest of the game. The core Pokemon games are predictable, with towns being safe areas where we can heal and buy items, as opposed to routes, caves, and the occasional building full of hostile trainers and wild Pokemon. This formulaic approach makes it easy for the player to know where they stand and paces the game well. When you're in a route, you know you'll have to fight non-stop. When you're in a city, it is time to rest talk to NPCs, and explore at your own leisure. A carefully crafted experience completely lost in Colosseum. Some towns have Pokemon centers, some don't. One feature is a JRPG-style inn where you have to pay. Sometimes you'll find random healing machines inside a building. Sometimes only the PC, forcing you to do all the healing by hand. Sometimes trainers fight as soon as they see you. Sometimes you need to talk to them. Sometimes they're nice enough to ask you if you are ready to fight. Sometimes they jump you. Sometimes leaving an area resets trainer encounters. Sometimes not. This game is all over the place. You never know what to expect next. The idea of altering the Pokemon formula has merit, especially nowadays with the insight of years of Pokemon games with almost no risk taken but any change needs to have a clear purpose, something I cannot find in Pokemon Colosseum. Ultimately, the saddest part about these shortcomings is that they were solved as early as Gen 1. Pokemon is, in essence, a never-ending streak of trainer fights, but it is context and pacing that makes it entertaining, addictive even. Game Freak understood in the very first installment of the franchise the importance of breaking encounters up between routes, caves, gyms, and knowing when to allow us a moment of respite. Instead, Colosseum has a giant level cliff. The doubles format is a brilliant choice, but having it be the focus of the game, accompanied by difficult encounters, almost forces a well-rounded team something already hard to achieve in the core games. But even fighting every single trainer on the way, spreading experience over more than two Pokémon severely limits our leveling capabilities, and nothing is done to help us increase the amount of EXP we get. Worse, the level of trainers skyrockets out of nowhere, and since our team consists of Shadow Pokémon who cannot level up, which we'll get to soon, the sense of progression that defines Pokémon is gone, only to be replaced by a level chasm. The extra difficulty is appreciated, just better served in side content, not the main story. Like the previously mentioned Deep Colosseum, a great challenge, although a tad too lengthy. But a great challenge is not what is needed here. Remember, this is the very first game to be exclusively doubles, a complex and punishing format. Yet Pokémon Colosseum completely relies on previous Pokémon knowledge. The game fails to ease the player in and teach them the correct strategies and approach to double combat. It is sad that halfway through the game I had to stop dead in my tracks and grind Mount Battle for three hours when I realized relying on random Shadow Pokémon was inefficient versus just using Ombreon and Espeon, our two powerful starters. What's even sadder is that I spent a majority of the time pressing the A button non-stop without even looking at the screen. It is the textbook definition of a mindless grind. 
The lack of natural progression gets even worse when you learn about this game's exclusive addition to the world, Shadow Pokemon. It is paradoxical, the worst issue plaguing Pokemon Colosseum is what makes it unique. Shadow Pokemon are the smelly Pokemon only Rui can see. Our goal, the reason we allegedly stole the Snagam machine, is to capture these strange Pokemon. But since fights are doubles, catching attempts means getting pummeled while throwing balls. Try to have any kind of capture strategy in these conditions. And we are not helped by the fact a lot of the Pokemon have a very low catch rate, including the three legendary beasts being the main antagonist's signature Pokemon. Doubles is already a punishing format, but having lengthy fights against difficult strategies that ends with a legendary Pokemon is just mean. Once we have caught the Smelly Pokemon, we are not done, as we need to purify them. Every Pokemon has their experience bar replaced with a hard gauge. Until that gauge is lowered, we cannot level up. The XP is not lost, we eventually get it back. But we first need to have the Pokemon open its heart. To do so, we either have to use the Pokemon in combat, call it when it enters hyper mode, or massage it using oils. While they are in shadow form, a Pokemon's first move will always be Shadow Rush a typeless move with recoil with a higher chance to crit in hyper mode. And the three other preset moves are unknown until the heart gauge is lowered. This means every Shadow Pokemon's moveset is initially hidden, while Shadow Rush severely limits combat strategy. But even then, it is difficult to utilize moves until purified, because of hyper mode. A Pokemon in hyper mode can only use Shadow Rush, with any other order likely to be ignored. It gets even better when you learn going into hyper mode is completely random, cancels the Pokemon's turn, and that calling it out of hyper mode also eats up its turn. And a Pokemon with a low heart gauge will trigger hyper modes more often. Awesome! You can start a fight with two Shadow Pokemon, have both enter hyper mode, and call both, while your opponent goes to town. That's four actions, two full turns spent doing nothing. Imagine that? Well, I don't have to imagine it, it happened to me. And it is not a rare occurrence to get completely messed up by a badly timed hyper mode. So, to summarize, we are supposed to use Pokemon who randomly lose their turns, are encouraged to use the same attack regardless of the encounter, and cannot obtain XP until purified which takes forever and all but assures our Pokemon will be underleveled thanks to the level cliff. Fun is what this entire mechanic is. It's like someone took the core Pokemon combat and decided it wasn't good enough, so they replaced the enjoyable parts with fun instead. <sighs> See, it's happening again. I need to think positive. Come on. Positive, positive, positive. The art style of Colosseum is absolutely fantastic and really creative. For a game that takes place in the desert, it is surprisingly colorful, from the towns to the characters. The reason I am so disappointed with the lack of story is that I really love the character design. From our main protagonist Wes, the old man with a feisty Pikachu Egon, the crazy looking Cypher admin, the varied random trainer designs, and by far the most ridiculous character, Mirror B. Colosseum's art style is a lot darker than other Pokemon games, and can get pretty edgy at times, but is always interesting. While I had many problems with the Railgam Tower, I was still stoked to be here and loved what I was looking at. The region of Ore is so unique in its look and setting, it is clear a lot of care went into making the game feel different from the standard Pokemon fair. In that regard, Colosseum is a resounding success. And this level of quality is seen in the Pokemon animations as well. There is so much personality and detail in the combat animations. One of Colosseum's main selling points was 3D Pokemon, and the developers made sure not to disappoint in that regard. It is heartbreaking 
that within minutes of starting the story, I was already lamenting that the most recent Pokemon entries, Scarlet and Violet, did not feature such expressive animations. I understand the reason why. It would make fights way lengthier and cost a lot of money. But as a player, I don't care. All I know is that this game made in 2003 felt a lot more pleasant to look at than another game in the same franchise made almost 20 years later. Now, most models and animations were reused from the Nintendo 64 games Stadium 1 and 2, and when juxtaposed with the Gen 3 models, really stick out. But the animations do a lot of the heavy lifting, and they remain excellent. Would I look at them for tens of hours? That's another question. Also, the interface is not very inspired, especially compared with other parts of the game oozing style. Nevertheless, when it comes to looking good, Colosseum delivers. As for the game's soundtrack, it… exists. Pokemon Colosseum's music is not bad, but it's not good either. There's a reason why the tracks I used for this video come from other Japanese RPGs. It is a genre where competition is fierce, and great music is easy to find. In that regard, Colosseum's OST is weak. Most tracks don't have much energy, and at best work as background themes, which is sad when most of the player's time will be spent in combat. There is also a big issue in the way it is used. Why the heck is the best battle theme in the game by far relegated to random Colosseum trainers? while the brooding and somber admin theme is used in combat. Sure, it is a darker theme, but it lacks the tension and momentum you expect from a boss music. A game's soundtrack is perhaps its most subjective aspect, and Colosseum's OST did not impress me at all. For as much as there is to like, and I really wanted to like the game when I started, nothing distracted me from what makes Colosseum such a slog. The never-ending grind. As a kid, a lengthy game where nothing much is accomplished wouldn't bother me at all. I had more time than money anyway, and no baseline for quality. As an adult though, the amount of padding in this game is staggering. It took me 30 hours to finish the main quest post-game while catching 48 Pokemon. It doesn't sound like a lot, until you remember this game has very little plot and most of that time was spent grinding encounters. You have to grind to catch out a Pokemon, grind to purify them, grind to level your team, grind to have any kind of money, grind through encounters to move forward in the story, and once you're done, you have to grind a hundred fights in Mount Battle. Multiple times if you're committed to seeing everything. Colosseum feels like it doesn't value my time at all. And that's unfortunate. You know, I would respect this game more if it was called Pokemon Stadium 3. 
because it is the game they made. Your team has mostly fixed levels, a predetermined moveset, and the game features almost no story or exploration, focusing instead on combat with great animations and well-made encounters. I don't really enjoy Stadium 1 and 2, apart from the brilliant minigames, but I respect both games immensely. They are exactly what they are sold as, Pokemon fights in 3D, no more, no less. Unlike Colosseum, they don't pretend to be something else. But what about the Living Pokedex Challenge, the reason we are playing in the first place? I usually make a recap of my experience with each game, but in this case, it may not be such a good idea. I want to play this until we're done with the annoying part. Hopefully the annoying part is not the full game. Oh, seven hours! It took us seven hours! And we're finally playing a Pokemon games. Pokemon game. Look at this, we have moves. We're, we're not bogged down by like silly mechanics. Seven hours. So, it's time, it's time we, we stop pretending we're playing a good video game and start playing the game the way the game wants us to play. And by that I mean grind like a dumbass for hours. Because why even make interesting gameplay when you can replace it with grinding? This game, you know? Because why make, why make good Pokemon games when you can make bad ones is the real, is the real question. You know, hey! You want to stall? Let's stall, buddy. Let's do it. Go for it, man. Yeah, you want our track? Go, dude. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. Look at that. Confuse Ray. You want to do nothing? Awesome. Let's do nothing every turn. I love it. Yeah. Oh, Dustclops woke up. Oh, Confuse Ray. Nice. Woke up, confused rate. That is a that is a turn. That is a turn. That's awesome. Morning sun, confuse ray, attract, confuse ray. Welcome to Colosseum. Mmm. Beautiful. The reason this video turned into an analysis of Pokemon Stadium is because that's what most streams turned into. It kept me busy during the long hours of watching the same combat animations and going back and forth to heal using a PC. Still, my goal is to capture every single Pokemon, and I was determined to accomplish it, until this game completely broke me. For all the reasons I have mentioned, I slowly became more and more fed up with Colosseum, ending every stream bummed out and salty about the whole experience. I tried, I really did, to play the game the way it was intended, issues and all. You can obtain infinite balls in this game if you use any ball with your first Pokemon and switch its order with your second, a technique I ignored at first. But then I realized money was going to be an issue, so I used it. And once we got the Master Ball, well... No glitches either, which are different from cheating, but tend to make the game less fun. Catching Pokemon just isn't the same with an endless supply of Master Balls. Catching, Catching Pokemon, Pokemon just, just isn't, isn't the, same the same with an, an endless, endless supply, supply of, of Master, Master Balls. Balls. That's one promise broken, and not the only one. Obtaining Ho-Oh in Colosseum requires clearing 100 fights in the Mount Battle Challenge. I am not doing it. I am absolutely and completely done. I established the arbitrary rules of the Living Decks with the expectation the games themselves were enjoyable. But here I stand, broken and more than ready to get it over with. So infinite Master Balls, and no ho-oh. I'd rather do the Mystic Ticket event instead. If it makes my living decks illegitimate, great. For me, enjoyment is ultimately the most important factor. So, after 30 hours of gameplay, we own the 48 Shadow Pokemon 
as well as the few extra additions. Most of them were available as part of the story and post-game quest, with a few exceptions for the ones I missed the first time through. The silver lining of Colosseum is that the available roster features high-level Pokémon and difficult-to-obtain pseudo-legendaries, such as Tyranitar and Metagross, saving us time on grinding experience. But we are not quite done yet, as we still need to purify all the Shadow Pokémon, which means more grind, around 10 hours' worth, from what I've been told. I will get around to it eventually, but you don't need to see that. Just imagine this footage stretched out over 10 hours. Finally, we can use the special bonus disc to obtain Jirachi. Purifying all the Pokémon should reward us with Celebi, if we were playing the Japanese version. Which makes a lot more sense, as we can call upon it to instantly purify one of our Pokémon in the story. But alas, we are playing the NTSCU version. But who knows, maybe Celebi will magically appear in our team if we believe hard enough. Maybe. I'll come back to you on that, once we get to centralizing all the Pokémon we own on our main Emerald save file. But we will need to obtain our official Gen 3 Dream Team first. As much as businesses would like you to forget, quality is made by people, not companies, nor brands, and takes time. It is why I thought important to learn more about Genius Sonority at the beginning of this video. It doesn't mean a random person cannot craft something amazing, or that experience will prevent you from making mistakes. But Pokémon Colosseum is plagued by issues whose origin is simply a lack of game development knowledge, practice, and probably time. To their credit, they were up against Gen 3 Game Freak. Regardless of what you think of them now, the Game Boy Advance era is regarded by many as the company's peak. Anybody pitted against this level of quality had an almost insurmountable hill to climb. What makes Pokémon Colosseum such a bummer for me is that the core problems lie not in the ideas themselves, but with their execution. Colosseum is not just some garbage to throw in the trash without second thought. It is full of interesting concepts that beg to be executed better. And for that reason, even though I have spent many hours I wish I could get back, I am still cautiously optimistic and looking forward to Pokémon XD Gale of Darkness, the sequel slash improved version of Colosseum. Because after fumbling so much, Genius Sonority eventually fixed all the issues with gameplay, and XD is the best Pokémon game ever. Right? Thank you very much for your time, and for the patience and support of every patron helping this content happen like Arcat's Store, Kelzini, Chris Launders, Lucas Maximilian Lur, Jonas C, and The Only Venom. I hope to see you in the next video, and wish you a wonderful day.